Okay, so yesterday we talked about how bacteria cells will um, enter the host cell and how they can penetrate the host defense systems. And so now we're going to look at how pathogens can actually damage the host cells um, in general. There's a couple of different ways that they can do that. So first they've got to uh, get inside of the host and then um, as soon as they get in, most likely the host cell is going to start attacking um, the pathogen. So it's got to be able to get around that. Um, so the micro microorganism invades the body tissue. It initially encounters uh, phagocytes of the host cell. So phagocytes are um, cells that try to eat and kill any pathogen that enters um, the host cell's body. So it's the first line of defense for the host cell. So if they destroy it, obviously they win and there's no damage or disease occurs um, if they can't um, successfully destroy it, then the host defense system can get overwhelmed and that's when damage and disease is going to occur. So it can damage the host cell in four different ways. So it can use the host nutrition um, nutrients, it can directly damage the cell itself, it can produce toxins, and it can produce a hypersensitivity reaction, it's like an allergic reaction. So first it can use the host nutrients. Um, so just like any other cell, when a pathogen enters the host cell, it's got to have different, it's got to have access to different sources of nutrients in order for it to um, survive. So in most cases, iron is one of the things that is required for pathogenic bacteria to survive. Um, but when usually um, a pathogen enters the human body, there's not a whole lot of free iron just floating around. Usually the iron is busy doing stuff. And, um, so the bacteria has got to find a different way to um, to get free iron in those cells. So one way it can do that is it can um, secrete a protein called this uh, cytophores, and it'll help the bacteria acquire free iron that it needs to survive. Um, so it can directly bind to it. Um, it can also produce toxins that will kill host cells so that it releases the iron so that the bacteria can use it. There's a number of different ways of um, how this happens. Um, so also the cells, uh, the pathogens can cause direct cell damage to the host cell. So once the pathogens attach to the host cell, um, they can, like I said, just cause direct damage. Um, and then, so most times a, a pathogen will cause damage to a cell in order to get into the host cell to start multiplying. And when it does that, usually the cell becomes so large that it actually makes the cell rupture and it's going to um, completely destroy it. So that's obviously direct damage. Um, many viruses and intracellular bacteria uh, grow in host cells and then are released when the cell ruptures. And then once they spread to other tissues and do this over and over and over again, you get bigger and bigger numbers of bacteria or viruses. Um, and it just, uh, multiplies throughout the whole body. Um, some bacteria can actually just penetrate the host cell. So thinking about like boring a hole into the host cell itself to gain access inside, so that would be direct damage. Um, but most of the time, the damage to bacteria is going to be caused by toxins. And we're about to talk about that. So toxins are some sort of poisonous substance produced by a microorganism. Um, Oftentimes, that's the primary uh, factor contributing to the pathogenic properties of microbes. 
So this is what is most often used by microbes to um, uh, to overwhelm the host cell's defense. So the ability of a microorganism to produce toxins is going to be toxigenicity. Genicity, um, and whenever toxins are found within the blood, it's going to be called toxemia. Uh, so there's two types of toxins um, when we when we talk about these we can talk about them in two different ways uh, so we have endotoxins and exotoxins so endotoxins are going to be produced within the cell wall so endo endo meaning inside so it's going to be produced within the cell wall and then something's going to happen to release those toxins to the outside world. And then exotoxins, meaning outside, um, they are still produced inside the cell, but they are made to be released as well. So let's look at a picture because that kind of sounds like the same thing we just said. So with the exotoxins, they're produced inside and we know that they're gonna be released to the outside world. Whereas the endotoxins are created one with the cell. And then when the whole cell dies, that's when they're released. So this is, the exotoxins are made to be released. Whereas the endotoxins are made one with the cell until the whole cell dies. Hopefully that makes a little bit more sense. So again, made to be thrown outside whereas the endotoxin is not released until the whole cell itself dies so this cell can keep living whereas this cell is going to be dead okay so how does toxigenicity differ from direct damage so toxigenicity was what so we have toxin and we have genicity so this is the ability of a cell to produce a toxin. And how does that differ from direct damage? Well, direct damage is actually like something physical. So boring a hole into something, uh, causing the cell to rupture, whereas the toxin is going to, is going to do that. But um, the cell itself is doing the damage if that makes sense. hopefully that makes sense um like if you have a chisel in your hand and you're doing direct damage to something versus producing a poison that's then going to do something okay so um so a toxin can cause damage but it's via different means So we have uh, lysogen, uh, lysogeny and we have pathogenicity, okay? So we talked about before um, bacteriophages, which are viruses that infect bacteria. And we talked about how um, when they do infect a bacteria, that they can incorporate the DNA from themselves in with the um DNA of the bacteria. And when that happens, it becomes a prophage. Okay. Um, so think about this as a virus and a bacteria coming together. And so now we have the DNA composition of both. Um, and so Sometimes it's not always um, blatantly obvious that this has happened. And so a bacteria is going to continue to reproduce like it normally would. But now it's got chunks of virus DNA in there. And it may not become apparent until later. So that's the lysogeny uh, that we're talking about. And just combining both of 